Welcome to the Torpreneur Podcast. Travel industry veteran Shane Whaley will take you on a journey with fellow torpreneurs, sharing their tips, ideas, insights, and success stories to inspire you to make your tour business the best it can be. And now, here is your host, Shane Whaley. Jamie Robinson, welcome to episode 170 of the Tourpreneur podcast. How are you? Very good, thank you. And thanks for having me on. Um, as I was just saying to you, I've been listening to a few previous uh, episodes and I'm, I'm in very good company. <laughs> so hopefully I can provide a little bit of value. Um, yeah, let's see how we go. Yeah, well... I wouldn't have uh, invited you onto the show if I didn't think you could offer some value. Um, I have observed your business success from afar. I'm here in uh, right at the Canadian border, and you are in uh, New South Wales in Australia. I've seen your Facebook posts and your Instagrams, and you know you're even getting traction with uh, Indian media. And I'm like, wow, Jamie's doing something different down there. And it may be a little bit more different from some of our other guests because you have built an experience business around two very iconic cars. And when I say that to people, they think, oh, Porsche and Ferrari um, or Trabant, maybe <laughs> East German Trabant. Um, but no, you've built a business around what two cars in particular? Um, yeah, so I kind of fell into this. So I've built a business around providing tours and wedding experiences and um, birthday outings in London black cabs and Australia's only Indian taxi. So, yeah, um, I've been on that Trabant safari that you mentioned, and that was great. And, yeah, I've, I'd like to sort of provide something as memorable and fun as that, I guess. Yeah. So what were you doing? Like, just to share your background a little bit here. And as I said in the intro, you know, we, we go back a long way. We grew up together in Swansea. Um, you left the UK. You moved to Dubai. You're at Dubai for a while. And next thing, you turn up in Sydney. So what were you doing in Sydney before you started your business? Okay. Um, yeah, so I was actually in Sydney before I went to Dubai. I, went, I came here backpacking for right. a year. And... I met a German girl and went back to the UK, went back and forth to Berlin quite a bit, and then um, started to miss the sun back in Swansea. So I sent my CV off to every English-speaking country with hot weather and managed to get a job in Dubai um, in an exhibition company. So I spent seven months there, and, yeah, there's, it's a bit of a challenging environment, Dubai, without getting this... Um, <laughs> One day I decided to go to Australia again and flew flew back here and worked in the exhibition industry for a while. Um, the companies that I was working with got either bought out or went under. So I went back to graphic design, which is what I've got a degree in. And um, yeah, one day I did a logo for a guy who had a black cab company and ended up running his business for him, um, buying one of my own, and then buying two, and um, buying three, four. And the Indian taxi came into it from watching an episode of Top Gear where they were racing the famous taxis of the world. Yeah. And yeah. they had a Hindustan ambassador in that, and it had, like, tassels all over it. It had incense burning on the counter and... It was just so colourful and, you know, it just looked amazing. And they had the New York cab in that as well. So I had this idea that perhaps in addition to the black cabs, it could provide an Indian taxi as well. So, and also the New York checker cab, I thought that would be good too. But there's only 300 of those left in the world and they're pretty expensive. And I don't think there's really the market in Australia for the checker cab. So why yeah, um why do you think there is for the london black cab and the, the indian car why do you think there's a market for that oh uh, there's loads of brits in sydney like <laughs> yeah you go to places like koji and bondi and oft well not so much recently 
properly, but usually the most of the accents you hear are sort of British or Irish and um, Australians love to go to London and do a gap gap year there as well so a lot of the markets that we have in the black cabs are people have either met in the uk and then you know they've come back to australia and get married here or it might be a british person getting married here or people who've moved here from years ago and their daughter might be buying them a black cab experience for their birthday so i kind of like drive them around take pictures of them give them bowler hats to wear union jack flags to wave and you know they might not have been back home for sort of 30 years so it's they they love it you know especially the older people yeah um but yeah and there's a huge indian population in sydney as well so yeah that's that's why that that car is sort of taken off what kind of reaction do you get when you're out in the uh, the Indian car? Uh, what's the make and model of it? Because I'm not a car guy, as you probably remember, but what's the make and model of the Indian car you have? So I've got a 1954, um, in India, it's called a Hindustan Landmaster. Right. And the car that came after that in 1956 was a Hindustan Ambassador, and it was the only car that was made in India pretty much up until 2014. So the, sh- the shape stayed the same um, for all of that time. You know, like that Trabant shape is so kind yeah. of iconic and retro that look, that car remained the same for that period of time, like the old Beetle, you know? So everybody in India knows that car, the same as everybody in the UK knows the black cab. Um, so when people see it, it, it just evokes all these memories for them. And yeah, it's, it's the reaction I get. I basically can't drive that car without somebody stopping me. And it, it's incredible, honestly. Like I, I can tell you so many stories. Um, so with old cars, like what anybody will tell you is, is they'll break down and what you want to happen is they break down when you're driving it not when you've got passengers in the car so you've got to do you know a lot of um driving yourself and one day I was getting the car fixed up and I broke down on the highway and I'm in bits going oh god you know this is on like like the N4 kind of thing and I managed to get to the side and like two minutes later this car pulls up next to me on the highway blocking the entire lane and this guy gets up this indian guy and he's like oh my god this is an hindustan ambassador how have you got this car it's like never mind that get your car off the road you're going to cause an accident there's like yeah. people beeping in and he's he's taking pictures of his ipad and his wife's going come on you're going to spoil the vegetables we've got to get home and cook and he was so chuffed to see it and then another time um I was go- I was driving to an event and I pulled in at a petrol station and this this girl came running over and she's like, oh my God, this is an Indian taxi. How have you got this? And they said, well, I've got to drive to a wedding. So she followed me for 25 minutes because her dad used to be a taxi driver in Mumbai and he was in the toilet when she saw the car. So he he got out and he was like having his picture taken with it. Wow. And he was just so chuffed. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's just nice. Like, I, I guess all, all of your sort of guests and everybody who follows is in this industry. Just It's just nice to make people's day that little bit better, you know? Like, we've probably all had really crappy jobs and um, thought, why am I doing this? And, yeah, to be able to give something to people and see them happy, I think is good. So I think yeah. that you, you've hit the nail on the head there, Jamie, about our industry, because very few people are making tons of money out of this. But... What yeah. gets out of bed in the morning is like you're doing something that's making people smile and happy and um, just creating a beautiful experience. So I wanted to ask you, so you, you had this idea, um, and obviously you're going out and buying taxis. These things are not cheap. How did you fund the first few taxis that you bought? Uh, well, so, yeah, I was working in the – I went back to working in graphic design, and I was working for an engineering company, and um, – I, I broke my leg and I sort of had this whole kind of change of thought whilst I was recovering from that. And, um, you know, but when you, when you can't do anything, it makes you appreciate things a bit more. So um, after or during the recovery time, um, 
this was part in due to you, I guess, read it following your story. I, I decided to uh, go vegan and like that, that sort of gave me a lot of confidence because you're constantly kind of, you know, answering people's questions and you, you kind of have to own that decision. So it, it just makes you think, well, all right, I've done this and I'm not kind of following the crowd anymore. Um, and I, I went back to work for, for this engineering company and I wasn't particularly enjoying it. And one day their share price halved. So I, I went in to see the manager and I said, oh, I noticed your share price is halved. Um, I guess you'd be making redundancies. And she said, oh, um, what are you offering? And I said, oh, well, you know, if you need to get rid of people and... She's like, oh, we're not supposed to be taking voluntary redundancies. But anyway, they, they sort of paid me off. So I had the money from that. Um, I managed to get a lot of design work after I left. And the opportunity came up to buy one of these cars. And yeah, I got one and just sort of kept my nose to the ground. And when, when other cars came up at an affordable price, I just bought them. Yeah. Um, Wait, but I don't remember you being very good, like mechanically, with cars. Is that something you had to learn, or I've learned more about cars than I ever wanted to? Um, <laughs> so, yeah. well, this is one of the, the things. I think if I was mechanically good about cars, um, I'd be a, a, in a lot better place. But most of the sort of money that I have earned has probably been spent on repairing these things. So. Um, yeah, but you know, you, you kind of forget about that and just focus on the, the fun it provides. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you're up and running, you've got got your fleet of taxis there. How did you go about acquiring your first customers? And I don't mean friends or family, but customers you didn't know before. Like how did you go about getting those? Well, it's a very niche market, the black cabs. So there's only sort of two or three companies in Sydney. Um and like my background's in graphic design and visual communication, so I was able to put together a decent website thinking from the customer's perspective, you know, what they might like, or more so perhaps thinking from my own perspective. If I was paying somebody to drive me around, what would I like and what would I appreciate? So I've added things like, um, you know, GoPros and the British props and things like that, and just try to make it more than a journey and, and a whole experience. So, yeah, sorry, going back to how I inquired that, how I acquired the first um, customers. Uh, you, using Facebook was was probably good. Just, to, you know, share pictures and say, oh, this is what I'm doing now. If you, if you know anybody who wants to hire a black cab or if you know anybody who's getting married, I did, I did a few jobs for free, and that kind of got word of mouth. Mm. Um, that carried it a bit. And, yeah, and I, w I was lucky, I guess, because I had some kind of idea of how to create a website mm. and optimize it so that it could be found on the first page of Google. Um, another thing is posting on Facebook groups, like there's a, a Pond Down Under group, which has got 12,000 um, followers on it so you just find sort of communities where people who might be interested in the product um hang around and yeah just share what you're doing on that and that's that's probably the most inexpensive way to advertise i think so how do you go for, for our listeners who might want to adopt a similar strategy how do you go about engaging with a face group like that without coming across as too salesy right because everyone hates that person who comes in and just from the back it's like oh i i offer this you know buy that <laughs> what did you do well, to engage with that group and i i guess it's it's genuine interest as well so you know when you're the other side of the world you do miss things back home and um, so you might talk about football results, whatever, and people start recognizing your name and, and just be like sincere and authentic. And if you, I think, sorry, that's the dog. Wait, um, I think that's only the third dog to have appeared on Torpreneur. Brilliant. We always love dogs on the show. Don't never apologize for that. Uh, I think he might make an appearance soon, but, um, <laughs> yeah, so just give as much as you 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 want to get, I suppose, or give mm -hmm. more, and then people are, are sort of more um, willing to help you. And 
just be polite to just say, oh, look, I've, I've set up this, this business. Um, I think it might be of benefit to your members. Do you mind if I share a post, you know, and I'm happy to take you for a drive to introduce nice. you to yes. the car. And, and yeah, just, just, just be, <laughs> just be nice. <laughs> that's, that's. Yeah, the, but that's so many people, you, you would think that's basic and, you know, common decency, but it's pretty, as someone who runs a, a couple of Facebook groups, you'd be surprised when people just storm in and show up and throw up, as I call it, you know, without actually, you know, very, you know, the, the classy folks, the ones who write to me and say, hey, I've got this product or service. I think it'll be of interest to your group because of A, B, and C. Is it okay to post it? And I always think highly of folks like that who are classy enough to ask first. Uh, rather than just going in and i think that's the the advice we're sharing here right if you do join a group yeah definitely uh, yeah just respect isn't it because it's obviously taken this person a long time to build the group up and you know moderate the content so that the the content is relevant to the members and of interest and you just don't want some bloke turning up advertising yeah, yeah so yeah that, i think that's the most inexpensive way to do it and yeah, and if you if you're nice to the owners, they'd recommend you to everyone they know, and it just sort of builds from there, really. What other barriers did you face getting up and running? So, um, I don't know the laws in Sydney, but running, you know, motor based tours and experiences was there a lot of red, <laughs> was there a lot of red tape. As I say, it goes back to networks and being nice to people and asking them for their advice, and yeah, and being humble enough to apologize and <laughs> yeah. just say, look, I, I thought this was correct. Um, because what I found as well is in, in Australia, especially even the, the government doesn't really know the laws. So for example, when I was getting this Indian taxi sort of registered, um, you'd speak to one person and they'll tell you one thing. And I didn't think that was right. So I phoned the office again and speak to another person and you just keep going until you get yeah. the answer you want. Um, yeah, so I, I'd say that's a good tip for anybody really is just just keep going and, you know, usually, obviously some things you, you, you can't change the law, but um, yes, a lot of the people who work in these government departments don't know what they're doing and they've got no interest in helping you, but. If you keep going, you'll find somebody who who does sort of have an interest in their job and is willing to be a bit um, show some initiative and think from your perspective and try mm -hmm. to help you. So, yeah, you that you just got to keep going. Um, yeah, and you learn as you go along as well. So, yeah, it's all about learning and evolving, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And and that's why I enjoy our Facebook group because people will come in and say, hey, you know, I need insurance for, I mean, because it depends where you are in the world because rules and, and, and laws and policies are very different, but having a group where you can come and ask for help as you're setting up. Um, tell me about the first time you drove the Indian cab with a paying customer. What was that like? Oh, um, well, I, I, yeah, I, I'm just trying to think which one that was. Oh, yeah. So the first ever job we had for that was driving all these girls from um, a fashion company. So it was amazing. It's a tough job, isn't it? It's a tough job. It was a tough job. Yeah, I wish we had more more jobs like that. Um, no, but it was it was really good. So we were driving them to a Christmas party. They hired a black cab and they hired the Indian taxi. And, you know, I had four four models in the Indian taxi next to me and yeah it was great um and they really loved it because again you, you just got to try and think from their perspective a bit and just ask them what would make their day a bit special take photographs had the GoPro taking pictures every five seconds to give, give them those photographs put on this Bollywood music and yeah it was great um then shortly after that uh I I formed this partnership with uh, a neo-Indian restaurant here called Masala Theory. So they do all these quirky kind of Indian dishes like strawberry chicken and um, all these, you know, slightly odd versions of Indian food, like right. the, the North right. pie, Indianized. And yeah, so that they, they had the same kind of quirky outlook as me, I suppose. And we, we got this partnership going, with, which is called the Ride and Dine. Um, of experience going with riding down. So I pick people up at the train station 
Um, and, you know, they see this white guy turning up in a 1954 Indian taxi. So they're like, what's going on here? And then you've got, you know, the Indian music playing. I've got this uh, Bollywood version of Jumping Jack Flash, um, <laughs> which goes down well. Yeah. So, yeah, I pick them up in that, take them to uh, a place called Blues Point, which is you can park the car and you can get a picture of the car with the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge in the background. So take some pictures of them there with these Indian props I've got and then take them to the restaurant for a seven course uh, degustation. Mm. Um, so that that's, yeah, that, that's been really popular. The first day we did it was on Valentine's Day last year. And we had like, I think it was five couples. So I was driving back and forth to Blues Point all day. Um, and they they all loved it, and they told their friends, and then from that, um, we got wedding bookings, and yeah, the the, the Indian community is quite quite um, tight knit in Sydney, um, so yeah, it, I got a lot of publicity from that. How did you go about getting the partnership with the restaurant? Did they approach you? Did you approach them? How did that all unfold? Um, so I advertised i'm just trying to think so i advertised that i had this indian taxi on the black cab page and this indian guy saw the post and basically tagged about 300 people in it um and so i obviously said to him like you know thanks very much for doing that really appreciate that would you like to go for a drive and he's like i'd love to read this car is synonymous with calcutta and it's a real icon of my city so um, this again, this is at the very early stages, and I don't really have these issues so much now. But as I was driving to pick him up, the car just cut completely cut out. So I, I think I mentioned this in in the uh, email to you about one of the biggest nightmares I've had. So I'm going to pick up this, you know, Indian influencer who's just tagged 200 people on on the Facebook post and is advertising the car as this great thing and it's cut out on the side of the road and you know I'm avoiding traffic and avoiding being killed so I phoned him I said look sorry mate <laughs> you know, the car's cut out I've I've sent you an Uber to take you to you know where you need to go and I think that kind of gesture sort of showed that yeah perhaps I've I wanted the best results for him and he understood it. And I met him a few days later and um, with the black cab and drove him around and, you know, just made up for a little bit. But he then introduced me to the guy who ran the restaurant. And when the car was working again, <laughs> showed, I showed him the car and he loved it, took him for a drive around. And um, yeah, it just went from there, really. Yeah. So it's, it's just networking again. It's just, keeping at it when i when i think about how visually stunning the photos are of the cars and i urge our listeners to go check that out the show notes uh, i'll add them on the show notes that the links at torpreneur.com forward slash 170 how how are you using instagram right now in your business or are you using it yeah um so i've been using instagram a bit um i've been trying to encourage people to tag the Bollywood cars when they share their pictures as well. But I always take pictures of every event. Um, so as I said before, there's a GoPro that takes pictures within the car as well. Right. So there's always some pictures of every project and I'll just upload them to stories. And if the picture is different or, you know, slightly more interesting than the previous projects, I'll also post it on the, on the page as well, but I'll always, upload them to stories if the, the guests allow it um some yeah I, i've done a few jobs where i'm not sure if all partners <laughs> knew the jobs were happening they said please don't post this on, on social media wow. so yeah yeah you have to respect that too yes. Yes. um but yeah just just regular updates and i haven't done this for a while but i was trying to sort of post tips as well um so share my knowledge with um people reading the site I've, I've put together a load of guides that, so that even if they don't book the cars they'll get some value from visiting my instagram pages of websites and they might further down the line say oh well you know i i didn't actually book this london cab for my wedding but 
the, this guy provided a good sort of free resource yeah. and one of their friends might book it. So are you, yeah. um, are you using Instagram reels? Um, yeah. So I, I've used them a bit and I've also used TikTok. So TikTok was quite funny because, um, I, I was cause it, like my background is a graphic designer, photographer, and you know, my after spending so long in Swansea Camera Club, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm always sort of taking pictures and um, uploading them and stuff. And I was at this one wedding where they had these horses running across the field and running past the bride and groom. So I took a video of this and I uploaded it to TikTok. It was the first video I uploaded. And it's had like 150 odd thousand views. And wow. I've, I've had, you know, all these followers and my nieces are calling me a TikTok influencer and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, I don't know anything about horses. I didn't really know what I was doing. But um, yeah, so it's it's interesting, which you upload a video and you might not think it's that great or whatever or understand what it's about. And then all of a sudden you've got all these followers and people commenting on it. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had quite the same impact with the videos of the Indian taxi. I had one person say, "What the hell is this? <laughs> what you know? This looks terrible." But that's really the only negative comment I've heard from anybody. Um, well, and, just one yeah. is is not bad at all. I mean, I, I I'm <laughs> going to be covering Instagram a lot more this year, and possibly TikTok on the show as well, because I just think for for an experience like yours that's so visual, I think there's a lot of opportunity, a lot yeah. of potential. But it's how you use it, how you harness it and i'm very brand new and i really did my first reel before we uh we came on air i'm just trying to learn how to use it so uh i think there's a lot of potential there because your your images are so you know striking as it were yeah and perhaps one thing i should do as well because um this industry is built on recommendations and reviews perhaps at the end of each um tour i should do a quick video with the people and say, oh, how did you find the tour? Would you recommend it? And then upload those as well. So that's just a thought I had this morning listening to some of your other um, podcasts. So, yeah, that could be a good way to use the reels and get back on TikTok with some more interesting comments. Yeah. Well, watch this space. I'm definitely going to be covering uh, Instagram and even TikTok as well on, on future episodes. Um, you said that – so I, I want to actually – just dig into some of the experiences that you have, because looking at your website, you've obviously got the wedding business, you've got um, birthdays and anniversaries, airport transfers, corporate transfers, Christmas parties, film and TV production, photo, video booth and pop-up bars, brewery, wine, gin and private tours. Um, I love how you're diversifying. So you've got the car, but you're looking at different ways you can use it and offer it as a service. Yeah, yeah. and. I, well, for me, it's, you know, it's more interesting to be involved in all these experiences and get to visit different places and things like that. But you do have to diversify to cover costs as well, you know. Like the bulk of the work with the London cabs especially is weddings, which are, you know, are, are great, but they, they can be pretty – it is pretty stressful sort of preparing <laughs> a vintage car, which you can't fix if it breaks down. Um, well, actually, you can fix parts of it, but not all of it. Um, and picking people up to take them to their weddings. There's a, there's a few amusing stories around that. I was driving to one wedding, and I always try to get there half hour earlier just for my own sanity, you know, and, and um, sort of my nerves. And I was driving to this one wedding, and I heard this massive bang, and I was like, oh, God, what's that, you know? Pulled over, and the exhaust had fallen off. So I'm underneath this car, and if you've got, an older car i can't recommend cable ties enough cable tie and the exhaust back onto the car <sighs> so i managed to get to the wedding on time picked the bride up she's oblivious to it we got to the ceremony and i said to her oh, how are you doing and she's like i'm really nervous can you tell me a joke i was like well i haven't really got any sort of uh, <laughs> acceptable jokes to tell you but i can tell you a story of what happened here and she's like oh what's that this is all the exhaust fell off and she's like what and I was like yeah look at my shirt you know it's covered in oil and stuff and she thought it was hilarious so that calmed her nerves and yeah Brilliant. we got on with it um but yeah to, to go back to your point so yeah I, I just think you know the, the more sort of services you offer um the 
the better the experience for you and the the better the potential income as yeah. well so do you have yeah, um do you have to uh, say yeah go ahead sorry yeah but one of the um so one of the partnerships i've built is with the langham hotel i don't know if you're aware of those mm -hmm. but, um so they i thought to stay there were, but i'm aware of them <laughs> yeah um so they they were originally from london and part of their branding is to have uh, a pink london cab so i did a job with a black london cab for them and got talking to the uh, marketing manager there and i just bought this um white london cab and when people hire london cabs they generally want traditional black so I had this white one and I wasn't really sure what to do with it. It wasn't really getting much, um, you know, many bookings. So I was talking to her and she said, oh, well, if you spray it pink, I'll refer it to all the guests that come into the hotel. And I was like, oh, I didn't really have any plans to have a pink car, you know. Um, but I thought, yeah, why not? So I, I got it sprayed pink and spoke to we spoke about different experiences that we could offer. So we do like a picnic tour where we pick people up at the hotel, take them for a picnic and then take them back. And we've got an insider's tour where we take people to some of the less obvious places in Sydney. Um, there's airport transfers and there's an engagement proposal as well. So, yeah, that's been really good. Um, this sort of started last January. So I don't think I've really had the full kind of mm -hmm. experience, but it's 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 been pretty, yeah, like it's just provided a lot of good experiences and the guests at the Langham aren't afraid to tip either, which is really nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've got a few good ones from that. Yeah. What, what advice would you have for our listeners who want to um forge a partnership with an iconic local hotel um there's something a question i get here a lot is people want partnerships of course and what what advice would you based on your experience with the langham what tips would you give to others around the world um well just yeah don't be afraid to give people free experiences because you're not doing anything anyway and like if you can if you can get through to the um the marketing manager or uh, the head concierge and say, look, you know, I've, I've got this product. I, I think it will be of interest to your guests because I've brought people here in it and they've loved it. This is their sort of testimonial. If you need to do that, I'd like to take you out and show you what it's about. Um, it's, yeah, it's funny you ask that today. So the marketing manager in Langham, um, she's just gone off on maternity leave. And her replacement um, sort of started in January. And I did a job there the other day and I just finished the job. So I, I thought, right, I wonder if she'd like to go and see what the car's about. So they called down and up she came. I drove her around um, the rocks and then they make a post on their Instagram saying, you know, book the car. And it's a bit embarrassing because they've put my picture on there as well. But do you know what I mean? Like in return for giving that 15 minute drive around they've now publicized me to 20,000 people or 20,000 followers so yeah it, it it kind of it although what you give you get back i think yeah. so yeah just um and i think it's probably better to sort of do things like that than spend loads of money on facebook ads and not get anything from it um so yeah, just find out who perhaps the influencers are or um, approach charities as well and mm -hmm. say, look, I've got this experience I'd like to offer you um, or I'd like to donate to your raffle or your fundraiser. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to take your marketing manager for to see what the experience is about first. And, yeah, just just sort of think around that sense, I'd say. Going back to the Langham, um, and tell me if I'm being too nosy here. Did they did they ask for a cut on on bookings, or is it just an add on that they offer for their guests? Um, so we so to to get the car spray pink and re upholstered to a five star hotel standard, that cost um, I think it was like in the region of seven and a half grand, and we weren't sure how well this would be received. Or, 
I, I perhaps wasn't sure how well it was going to be received. So uh, we came to this agreement where um, I wouldn't pay them any commissions until the, the costs were covered. Nice. And after that, I would give them 10% of any bookings. Yeah. So that's, yeah, the costs are already covered within a year, um, even though three months of that year were in lockdown as well. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> that, that's where we're at with the Langham. And nice for negotiating there. Cool. <laughs> I like that. Because it yeah, is a risk, I mean, right? Yeah. You could have spent that seven and a half grand and then not got any business and you're left with a pink cap. Mm. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, as I said, I, I've never really had much of an ambition to have a pink car, but yeah. Yeah, it, it attracts a lot of us wherever you go. Something else I wanted to ask you is just looking at your Bollywood car site so I can see that you have, you know, a bit of media already, like Deutsche Welle, SBS, The Australian. How have you dealt with handling the media? You were also on, was it Indian Radio? Uh, I heard something you shared. Yeah. So, again, this goes back to um, the uh, that guy who um, tagged 200 people in the car, Indranil. I've actually... Um, made him an honorary ambassador. I got a certificate made up and put in a frame and sent to him. So he put me in touch with the reporter from SBS and he, he interviewed me one day. Um, and then he changed jobs. So he was working for Deutsche Welle. And like a year later, he called me again and said, oh, um, would you be interested in doing a, a video interview? And I was like, yeah, yeah. So he did that. And then from that one interview, the Times of India picked it up. And then all of these other media outlets in India picked it up as well. So I think if I went to India, <laughs> I'd be as popular as Peter Singh, you know. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the bad thing about it is that people can't travel from India to Australia at the moment. So, yeah, it, it, the, the publicity came at a bad time. But hopefully... You know, it's in people's minds now so that when they do come to Sydney, they can get picked up by the airport and the Indian taxi. And yeah. Um, what advice? So would you, how, yeah. What advice would you give to listeners who get approached by the media? Because, again, very few of us are media trained. Right. And it's scary talking to the media. Like what, what tips would you share based on the interviews you've given? Um, just be authentic and just be honest, because that's the best way to be, isn't it? Like if 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 you're honest with people and you know you're genuine your passion will come across and yeah i i think you'll attract the the, the right people in in your life and your business that way mm. um so and also yeah what was it the malcolm mclaren said no publicity is bad publicity so yeah just just pretty much do everything if you if you can unless it's really against what you stand for but yeah yeah, it's just interesting that because I think a lot of journalists are quite lazy from what I've seen with that Indian taxi sort of article and how many people just copied it without contacting me yeah. and published it on, on their websites. Um, yeah, so you, you don't know where it's going to lead you to, you know, you don't, you don't know who's who's going to see it. And so it might just be for a small local paper, but somebody who works for a big paper might live in that area and decide you know they want to cover it and yeah so just just try and get as much publicity as you can one tip um, i have for tourpreneurs when you're invited to to be interviewed by a member of the media is not to be scared to ask the journalist or reporter hey what's a win for you in this interview and then they might yeah. say, well, my editor really wants to know the personal angle. Why is a Welsh person buying an Indian taxi? Or it could be, <laughs> you know, they really want the COVID story. How you? And I think if you ask a journalist that, I mean, they, they have an angle going in and they won't necessarily share it with you, but they're looking for it. Whereas if you make it easy for them, say, you know, what's a win for you today? What are you looking for in this interview? And then you can also channel your answers that way. Because I, I, I think once you help a journalist out and they get a good story, they get a pat on the back from their editor, they'll come back to you for more in the future because like you say i don't know if journalists are lazy i just think many of them are overworked um yeah yeah 
that's a bit harsh calling them lazy. But oh, well, I mean, we, grew up, <laughs> we both grew up reading the Evening Post um, and the Herald as well. So uh, no, but seriously, I think I think you know, making their life easier is, is every chance yeah, that to pull you back in the future. Yeah, it all boils down to thinking from other people's perspective, doesn't it? And you know, what would they like, or what would I like if I was in their shoe? And what ten percent can I I add to that how can I exceed the expectations so yeah when when you know the the Indian guy um was interviewing me Vivek and I was sort of asking him why he was interested in the car and what kind of results he would want from the 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 sort of article and yeah then you can sort of tailor your um interview towards that so yeah that's a good point and another another thing <clears throat> which I would suggest is if you're perhaps not media trained is to and they won't always do this you can ask the journalist to see a copy of the article before it goes to print just in case they get some information wrong such as <laughs> I did an interview with um this uh Hindi um newspaper in India and Obviously, it was all in Hindi, and you know we were taught Hindi in Swansea, as you know. But I've, I've forgotten it all, so um, it got published. And I, I asked her if I could see it before it got published, and you know she showed me. I couldn't understand any of it, but I later uh, Google translated it, and it was saying how my favourite dish was chicken tikka masala. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't eaten chicken tikka masala since like 2013. Um, what I said was that my interest in Indian culture stems from the food growing up in the UK, where Indian chicken tikka masala is number one dish. Um, but somehow that got <laughs> mis <Ouch. laughs> misconstrued. Ouch. But um, yeah, <laughs> Jamie, if I could put you in a time machine and go back to the beginning of you starting your business, what would you do differently based on what you you, you know already? Um, what would I do? Well, to be honest, I've been really lucky. Like with that SBS article, that that got a lot of coverage, and definitely meeting Injunil and him seeing that post, because like the the um, was it the High Commissioner to India has tweeted about the car as well. And if you had said to me when I was getting this car made up, um, the High Commissioner to India is going to tweet about this car in the first year, then I wouldn't have believed you, you know. So, um, but I guess what I would do differently. So, this this car is actually the second Indian type taxi that I've owned. So I bought one in Calcutta, got it completely restored, and was due to import it to Australia. But Australia changed the importation laws to so that if it arrived with asbestos components. Mm. on it which it does have in the gaskets and things it would be crushed and i would be charged a hundred thousand dollars for the privilege <sighs> so i actually ended up finding the western version of the same car it's an identical car and restoring it here so i yeah i i managed to sell that car in calcutta but i i guess maybe do a bit of due diligence and ask a few more questions on importing cars from india and you know that i guess that would have put a lot of people off but i i thought it was still yeah. a good idea and um i managed to get yeah this one together so you know it's interesting yeah. you know when we were talking about you came on the show and you felt a little bit apprehensive about it and you mentioned about the experience of some of our other guests and you felt a little bit not worthy coming on but listen what what i'm hearing is you're very entrepreneurial you're good at guerrilla marketing on a budget bootstrapping you've done a major partnership with a huge hotel very prestigious hotel and you're a problem solver, Jamie. I mean, you know, most people would just be oh, 100 grand of the car, you know, never mind the car being crushed, I'd be crushed if I got that <laughs> kind of news, right? But you've gone, you've knocked out the car in Calcutta, you've gone and got another one, you you know, you, you're a problem solver. And I think that's what most entrepreneurs are, we're, we're problem solvers. Well, you've got to kind of remember why you started, haven't you? And like, so I spent five years doing a graphic design degree. And the first job I got was 
a dog infringement notice so that if somebody let their dog go to the toilet on Swansea Beach, they'd get fined. And I was thinking, Jesus, you know, I've spent five years doing graphic design and I'm going to be doing this for Swansea Council for the rest of my life. So, yeah, I, I knew that I wanted a bit more than that. And I think once you've got an idea in your head, you just got to keep going with it and um, you make it work. You just, you, you're going to get pitfalls and you're going to get, problems and things but yeah just keep remember remembering what you're trying to escape from or why you started doing what you're doing so yeah. absolutely absolutely in terms of your your technology so you built the website yourself obviously you're a graphic designer looks great um how are you managing bookings so if i want to you know book an experience with you do you have a booking platform do you have software how are you accommodating that all right um i've yeah, so I did try using one of the, um, I don't know whether I should be name checking, was one of the more famous booking platforms. Yeah. And because of the, the nature of most of the work being wedding work, um, I think people want to sort of have that email conversation first before they book. So I didn't really get many bookings on the site, but I did have one booking. So um this was a sunday morning and i was actually with the mechanic fixing the indian taxi and then i get this phone call and i'm like hello and it's this really irate woman going where are you i'm like sorry and she's like well we, you're 10 minutes late you're supposed to be here you know my daughter's waiting and i was because like with with this job you get some nutters calling you up um, because, you, yeah, this is a, another thing to go, like the London cab. So you get people phoning you up, asking you for a taxi service right. where I have to explain it's a limousine. Car. So I just thought it was some lunatic, you know, and she's like, I've, I've booked this car. My daughter's looking forward to it, but I said, I've got no record of your booking. And she's going, I've got two young girls here crying, waiting for the car. And I think, who's this maniac, you know? <laughs> and I said, like, right, okay, can you send me the, the booking by email? So sure enough, she sends me an email, and the booking software had taken a booking but not notified me. Ouch. So I'm like, oh. And as it happens, this lady, I later found out, um, was the Australasian manager of the biggest um, internet search company. Wow. So um, I was like, look, I'm sorry, I didn't get this book in, but what I can do is I'll come and pick you up from the cinema and I'll take you for a joyride and then I'll take you home. And she's like, okay, yeah, thank you. You know, it's her birthday and she's really looking forward to being in, in the pink car. So I did that. I gave her, um, so I've got these little key rings and stuff made up, give the daughter one of those and just really tried to over deliver to make it up for it. Yeah. And um, she ended up leaving a really good review, you know, because um, she, she obviously appreciated that it tried to make an amends for it. So I didn't really have a great experience with the booking platforms. Um, but I think moving forward when international travel sort of um, opens up again and I could start offering more tours, I, I'm going to look at that again. Um, yeah, because I've set up all these email templates so you can reply to people quickly. Um, but it would be good if it, from the visitor's perspective, they could do everything online and just, yeah, without yeah. having to wait for and for you to have everything on your phone, right? You know, the, all the bookings, the reservations, the times, and, you know, you can manage your business from your phone rather than pen and paper. And I, I think yeah. it, as you grow. Well, I've got, I've got, I've got, you know, I use Google calendars and things like that. Um, and that's, this is another tip I'd give to people listening to this as well is, is do what you can to reply to people as quickly as you can, because often just because you are the first person to reply in, um, you'll get the job. Yeah. Because people, because, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's how I've got a lot of the work as well ahead of other people is because I aim to reply within an hour, mm. even if it's just a quick personal message rather than an automated message because you, you set that up as well, but just quickly reply 
one one or two lines thanks i've got your when can i call you or you know i'll send through the information soon and um another thing just on that as well i found as well that if people contact you by email the best way to reply to them is by email rather than try and phone them and you know or, or, or try and use a, a medium that you prefer um like I'll, I'll do all these weddings and it's crazy when you think about it because like this is the biggest day of people's lives and i'd say with 80 percent of the time like I'll send them an email and all the details and you won't speak to them until the week before when you phone them up to go over the details um, or sometimes not at all. <laughs> you think, yeah, so people are very comfortable with yeah. just communicating by email. Have you, um, have you ever looked into chatbots, AI chatbots? Um, yeah, there's, there's one on the Black Cab website at the moment. Um, but I, I, I have to keep testing those because um, I had Facebook Messenger on there as well, but it wasn't really linking through properly, so I wasn't no. getting the notifications to my personal thing. And then you check your business page and you've got all these, is there anybody oh, there? Yeah. Good amounts? yeah. So, yeah, it, that didn't really work so well, to be honest. There, that probably annoyed people more than it helped them. I've spoke to quite a few tour operators who swear by chatbots, and it surprised me at first because, you know, when I go and do banking online and a chatbot comes up and it's, like, generally just useless because I still yeah. don't know the information I want. But I am hearing from a lot of tourpreneurs that they're getting business out the chatbots. We ran an episode... I actually took a segment out of the interview with a chap called Evan uh, Tipton at Thomas, and he was had a, a he was one of his customers on, who was swearing by the chatbot. So I think the tech is evolving, and I think what I'm going to do, Jamie, is produce an episode or two where we dig deep onto chatbots. And what I try and do on, here on Torpreneur is not just have the gurus come on and say how great something is. I like talking to operators that said, "Yeah, I put a chatbot on my site. This is what worked well. This is what didn't. This is what I recommend." So we can get some advice from people who are in the trenches because I think it, from what you're saying, that it could be another useful way of picking up more business or actually engaging in that conversation with someone prior to booking. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot of potential with uh, AI, isn't there? Yeah, um, huge. But I think it, it, it also takes a, a a bit of an investment in time thinking about all the questions people are likely to answer uh, to ask and then what answers they want from it. Because, yeah, like trying to order fashion online and then trying to get your money back and you, yeah. you, you go through all these... You can't you can't even send an email to some companies, can you? It's infuriating. No. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it's important to have your email address and a phone number so that people have got that option too, rather than just keep to yeah. chat products. How did you go about coming up with pricing? Because that's also another question. Well, I get this asked a lot from listeners, unsure how to come up with pricing for their experiences. How did you go about pricing up yours? Um. Well, there were, as I say, there were, there were already a couple of operators. So um, basically found out their prices. And um, when you start off, you know, you've got to prove yourself a little bit. So perhaps you, you might start a, a bit under that or you might say guaranteed best prices. And once you started getting the reviews, then you can raise the prices because you've demonstrated your worth. Um, so yeah, just just try and find out what the, the market rate is. Do some research yourself. Uh, send some inquiries and uh, you know, um, you and Richard so some some made up name and um, yeah, that that that's probably the best way to do it. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Um, just before we, we wrap up, because I've taken up an hour of your time, it, it's early there over in Sydney. Um, are there any books that helped you in your journey? Yeah. Um, so the, the Four Hour Work Week is a great book. I definitely read, well, I actually listened to the audio book because I've recommended the book. Uh, I tried to read the book after listening to the audio book, and it wasn't that easy to read, I guess. But the audio book, I was listening to that and. I had to keep stopping the car to to make notes, you know, because mm -hmm. it was just it was just so much. And and one of the things he says in that is basically, you know, 
um, a professional is basically somebody who gets paid to do their their job. And he he used an example of how a friend became a relationship expert. And it's like, how do you become a relationship expert? So they were doing lots of free sort of talks to to students, and then it would be, um, you know, Joe blogs as seen at X university and then they do a corporate talk and as seen at x university and x company and then all of a sudden sort of journalists were contacting them for their comment on relationships because they they had this in their signature i, I think they also register at different um media associations to make themselves yeah. available for comments so yeah i i thought that book had loads of good um ideas in it um the e-myth and uh, revisited that's brilliant as well and i'd recommend people starting up to read that and kind of get those processes and um structured way of thinking in place early on um yeah so th those two were really good and yeah your your podcast has been really good um and what else is there? There's there's an Australian podcast, What You Will Learn, which has got summaries of um, sort of business and self help books. Mm. Um, so, yeah, their their reviews aren't very <laughs> thorough, but they're quite amusing, and you know you you can get ideas for books from there as well. So, mm. yeah, I, that does. I haven't read Ferris's book in probably I don't know seven or eight years i probably need to dig i've got it here i probably need to dig it out again and and go because you know we're at different stages of your life books speak to you in a different way um i should probably dig that one out and i'm excited i'm hoping that you're coming to london later this year because uh, you're silly enough to run the london marathon but you're doing it for a great cause right you're doing it for save the rhinos yeah yeah and i'm also donating uh 10 percent of the profits at the but the Bollywood car brings in to save the rhino as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's my motivation to stay healthy this year and stay off the old right. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back to the UK and doing some of these tours that I've heard people talk about on your show. And I was just listening to the last guy who got interviewed. And, yeah, it's there's... Yeah, there's, there's, there's so many things I want to do when I go there now and definitely be jumping on some of these tours. Well, it's interesting. You and I, have, in our youth, travel to some interesting places in Europe. And at that time, you couldn't really book experiences online or it was just the standard, you know, trip down the, the, the Danube River. Whereas you look now, there's all kinds of tours you can book. And I, and I think it's a wonderful time for us with like some of the kind of niche tours that I've been on. Um, you know, with my with my nerd hat on, um, we're very lucky to have that, and it's just opened up a whole world of possibilities, isn't it? Of experiences. Uh, I reckon this industry is going to explode in the next couple of years once sort of um, international travel is allowed. So, yeah. if you are thinking about um, setting up your own tour business, get all the foundation in place now and just be ready because people have been so restricted they just want to go, go out and see the world and experience things and yeah I, I think it's going to be it's going to be a good couple of years well we will do some tours when you come back to europe later this year and then i'm hoping in 2023 i can finally get down to australia so i can get in that uh indian cab of yours and uh you know i'll uh, i'll have fun down there in australia with you i've never been so i'm excited for that we left to emulate the joe cross movie go for a run along bondi beach that's right <laughs> that's right we'll have to do that jamie it's been an absolute pleasure um hosting you on the show i know you're going to inspire a lot of people particularly our listeners who have an idea but maybe they're a bit scared to pull the trigger on it and go for it i think you're going to inspire a lot of people to to jump in um what are your websites where can people follow you online so if you do a, a search for black cab central and Bollywood cars, um, you, you'll find me there. And if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. If you, you know, if you want more detail on my experiences or any ideas, I'm really happy to sort of share them with you. And yeah, it'd be good to connect to more people in the industry. And yeah, thanks very much for having me on today. And thanks for all you do. 
always been an inspiration to me from, you know, our days out in Swindon to following your own perfect, uh, your own sort of um, progressions in life, all the, all the things you've tried and, um, yeah. So, yeah, thanks for everything. Thank you. I appreciate it, Jamie. And, uh, yeah, what I will say just before we, we <laughs> I keep saying this, but you know, Instagram strategy, if you've got ideas for Jamie, because it, when you see the pictures, it's so iconic. They're so, so, um, yeah, they're just eye catching. If you've got ideas for Jamie on Instagram strategy, come let us know on our Facebook group, torpreneur.com forward slash Facebook. Um, Josh and Val, Jamie. <laughs> Cheers. Hoyle. <laughs> Hoyle. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Torpreneur podcast. Be sure to visit torpreneur.com to join the conversation and access the show notes, including links to the resources mentioned on today's episode. This is Torpreneur.